on the radar is like so it's on the radio at power but on the radar is it still its own separate entity like i own on the radar 100 mm-hmm. percent. you know what i'm saying but we started it in the iheart building um you know because like the good people over there like gave me the opportunity to use the studios and you know kind of start building the platform there as uh as i saw fit you know i started off doing like one or two interviews a week um after like i would do angie show or after i finished my my regular work and i was just kind of like interviewing up and coming artists from the city at the time literally anybody who wanted to do an interview i like i hollered at them you know Thanks. so i wasn't you know i wasn't it, it was just like yo if, if i fuck with you i fuck with you come come do on the radar and like you know shout out the good people at iheart who you know saw the vision and allowed me to just kind of do what i did without taking ownership of it <laughs> Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, uh, damn, man, it's so much, so many places to go with you. Uh, my man sent like a, a, a like a. Oh, take that off D and D in case somebody important needs it. I don't know if it was a uh, a one sheet or something. He sent it to me. I, I, Who said they're the they're the one sheet of me going around? I don't know if it was something like some. It was probably John. Yeah, it was something, but I intentionally didn't look at it because I was like, nah, I got so many questions in my own. Like I don't even want to know. Are we are, are we are we recording? Are we live? I mean, might be. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we, we, live, we live, we live, we live, we live, yeah, we live. Oh, now you good, you straight, you straight. This is, <laughs> see, this is not as like professional, like, y'all good, you could talk. You were saying two people hit you about me. What you were saying? Yeah, uh, John, the PR, and Zeppelin at AMPD. Okay, yo, I know, John, my guy, Zeppelin, yeah, yeah. they both from DMV. And I've been said I wanted, I, I said I wanted to But do we this. had been, before they even hit me, I think we had been followed each other. We did, definitely. Yeah, and that was like our, like, like, what is it, like, um, unsaid, like not like salute to each other. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was like we ain't say it, but it yeah, was like I feel like that's what it like yeah. that's really what it be in the industry. It's like somebody follows you and it's just kinda like I see you, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like and before that it's always kinda like I wonder if this person knows about me or if I wonder <laughs> if they like if they fuck with me or if they watch my shit. But like right. when you follow each other, it's kinda like that, like, you know, that like oh okay, I see you, you doing your thing, I fuck with you, right. I, I whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Do you think um first of all, let's 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 get this, let's get some professional type. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got a professional in here. Yo, what's pop? You know what time it is, boy? J Hill, Mr. J Hill Podcast. We in the building. Uh, super special guest. Uh, one of my peers, somebody I could talk to. That's, that's kind of like similar to what I'm doing, man. This is, yes. this is gonna be a great conversation. I could tell. I could feel it. I already know. Gabe NYC is in the building. What up, yes, bro? sir. Gabe P, Mr. Step Gabe in, step P. out. Don't yes, get sir. stepped on. That's the Instagram. My bad. That's the Instagram. <laughs> Gabe P is in the building. Yeah, from yes. New York City. Are you from originally from New York? Yeah, I was born in Queens. Okay. I was okay. born in Queens. Common okay. misconception. I spent a lot of my life in Queens and uh, Long Island. I kind of did like a little half and half in both. Uh, and then uh, I did a lot of my college time out in Queens too. What so. college you went to? St. John's. Okay. St. John's in Queens. Yeah, man. You, you can't. You did. Did you go to? Did Nyla go to St. John's too? Okay, so this I can tell you the story. So me and Nyla actually, that's how we came up together. So Nyla and I both went to school together. Oh. Nyla's um, she's a year older than me. Okay. Um, and then uh, we both started at our college radio station together. Um, so me and her had like shows that, you know, we had like d- different shows, but you know, they were, I don't remember if they might've been back to back certain days, but like, that's how me and Nyla had always known each other. And we were, uh, both communication majors. We both had classes together. Uh, uh we both did interviews. Uh, she helped bring Wale to the school. I think my freshman year. Mm. Um, and then we just, that's kind of how we started this. Like Angie Martinez came to the school for her book tour mm-hmm. one year. Um, they asked me to do the interview being from New York and growing up on Angie Martinez. They're like, yo, you need somebody else to do the interview with. I was like, yo, the other best person here is Nyla. And so me and Nyla did the interview. And then next thing, a couple months later, just Angie just takes us from there, puts us at iHeart. And then, you know, uh, I was 19. Then I'm 26 now. June is about to be my mayor. June is like my anniversary at iHeart. So probably like seven years I've been at iHeart. Yeah, seven years me and Nyla officially been at iHeart now. That's so, hard. Yeah, so we basically like grew up in that building too, which is really cool. Yo, that's crazy. First of all, they, be, they even have that opportunity. Like, you're not getting at nowhere but New York. Right. Nowhere. It got to, like, that got to, I was talking to, um, to, uh, she's going to hate me for this. God damn, I forgot her name, but try this in my brain, not my heart. I was, um, 
Freakin' Pumps. Um, uh, 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 she got the See the Thing Is podcast. She got the uh, the other one. Um, Mandy. Mandy. I ain't gonna clip it. Off. You can jump <laughs> shout out Mandy, it. man. I was talking to Mandy, and I was talking about like the importance of being in New York because like yeah. she had a long career and it started from New York. She was like, "Yo, New York, it's the mecca. Like that, it, that's the place to be." Yeah. Yeah, you feel like it. Like, you still feel like it's still a place to be. Absolutely. You know, I think it's like a little bit of everything. Like, it's like you know when they say uh, when some something meets opportunity. What is yeah? The, when um, preparation meets opportunity. When preparation meets opportunity, but you gotta throw mix in like a little luck and a little right place, right time. Facts. Cause you know, cause I like before me and Nyla got the job or the internship at iHeart. Like, me and her had been applied to mad mad times. Like, I think I got rejected four times. From, like, three from Power, and then one I did, like, uh, I tried the pop station, too. Like, whatever got my foot through the door. Yeah, facts. So I think it's sometimes it's really just, like, you kind of just get lucky because you're in the right place at the right time. Like, I I don't think that, like, me being there, like, that's not taken away from either of us. I think we both deserve to be there, mm-hmm. right? But, like, also it's just, like, what are the odds mm-hmm. that Angie Martinez is going to come do her book tour at St. John's because her current intern is also from St. John's and she's trying to figure out where to do this book tour and the interns, you know, you get, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's kind of yeah. like, it's like all these things, like, all the dice just kind of line up and it's just so crazy how, like, the universe and God works where it's like they all start falling down. And like like I just said, when uh, preparation meets opportunity, mixed with a little luck, right time, right place. And, you know, Nyla and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time with the right opportunities. And, and we took what we had and we ran with it. And, you know, we were prepared at that time because we had been doing radio. So, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was a, we were happy when we got it, but like we knew that like this is what we were meant to do. So, so I'm curious now because y'all was doing radio in college. Um, a lot of these podcasts in, uh, I mean, for lack of better words, journalists, we came out the trenches. Like we came, like man, I'll get a mic and like I can start. Like, but y'all went to school for this kind of right. Like, you- yeah, you. I mean, you could say that. I don't think we. Uh, I don't think we went to school. We we didn't go to school for it because I would imply that St. John's really like was like okay, we're gonna build you into radio host. Right, 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 like right. we were in communications field, but like. The radio stuff and, like, you know, Nyla can speak to it or any of my other peers who are in the industry now who did the TV station or say, or the WSJU, which was the radio station, like, that was really, like, yeah, I will say we were privileged to have a radio station that we could go to, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But it's a different type of out the mud because it's, like, we didn't get the type of support mm-hmm. that other things on campus would get. Like, if you looked at us versus, like, the business school, right? They got the business, they got the best things, the best computers, the best food, the best this, the best that. And meanwhile, we're running out of these like ringy ding radio stations that are definitely like you need, they need to be updated. They need paint jobs. Like it's it's nasty, but I'm still blessed because of we had that. Mm-hmm. You know, like I always say I like being the underdog and I like being the underdog at that school because of that. But I do like, especially people who pick up the mic and don't have that type of opportunity to just, you know, be at a campus and walk into a radio station. I respect that so much because like that's even, you know, to build a platform out of scratch is even harder than, you know, just kind of having even a ringy ding station to go to at a college. I I was even just looking at it from the sense of like, you know, you knowing you like you like putting in the work of doing the research of like, it's a different type of grind. Like both of them are different. Both. Let me say this. They both are grinds. Right, yeah. but we can't ignore somebody who really went to school for this and did this and like studied this. Right. To somebody who like just love it, and they might be going hard, yeah. but it's a different type of grind. And I was wondering, like, sometimes, like, do you ever when you hear these podcasts, be like, man, these people just like they want to be journalists, but like, where a where where a journalism at? Honestly, right. like, I think it's you know what too. It's like with schools, like there are certain schools that do a really great job of teaching you journalistic skills. Mm. And I'm not going to, I'm not bashing my college at all because I, you know, they gave me the platform. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't be here without St. John's, but I'm not also not going to like give them all, okay, the, yeah, yeah, all yeah, the flowers. Yeah. That, no, I, I'm, I can be critical. And I was just there last week. Like I love them, but it's like, I also acknowledge that's like, you really didn't do that great of a job teaching me how to be a journalist. Okay. You know, okay, cause okay. like, Bro, they, they make you take, like, it's a Catholic school, so they make you take theology classes. Philo- like, that could have been anything else that could have actually helped my career, right? Okay. I, bro, I took a video games class that all we did was play video games. The only reason I took that class is because I didn't want to take another class that semester. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But I will say, like, the best way to learn about the industry and doing all this is through experience. Like, 
I would say like sitting next to Angie Martinez every single day, making her notes for her, or just even like being in that room while she interviews. Like I think one of my first interviews with Angie was like Amber Rose and mm. and then Idris Elba, right? And just ever since then, just sitting in there and being the fly on the wall. Like I would even equate like if you watch some of my bigger interviews, like if you watch my Glorilla interview or my G Herbo interview or my Destroy Lonely interview, um, like I interview like her. Mm. I, and I'll admit that, like, you know, because she's I I was the fly on her wall for almost four years of my life. Mm. And even after that, with run, running the social media cast at power, I'll still be right there with her. So I think it's like, again, like, you know, not everybody can do this. Right. Because there is like a certain level of journalistic integrity and like knowledge that you have to have. Mm -hmm. But I think that, like, you know. Is, you know when you're a kid and they're like, if you want to play sports, like watch a lot of basketball, mm -hmm. or like watch a lot of baseball. Like you really just have to watch and study what people do. Cause uh, shout out my young boy Art, he does a great job of doing interviews over at Cam Capone. And when I first met him, he would always tell me how he used to watch like all the Charlemagne's interviews, and that helps him do interviews now. And he didn't necessarily, I don't know if he necessarily went to school for that, but he does incredible interviews now, and like that's how I know he was or how he learned how to do these interviews. Mm -hmm. So I think there's different ways of like getting that journalistic integrity, but what I feel like now is like a lot of people just skip that step of learning, even on their own time. Cause right. I could say, oh, I, I, I sat in the studio and learned from Angie, I learned from Charlemagne, cause I was there. Or I could say, bro, I sat at home all day and I just watched Cause you Angie. can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah. And it's pretty much, you're doing the same thing I'm doing, I just get a little extra behind the scenes yeah. and a little extra knowledge. It's not that different. Well, it is different, but you, get, you, you still get, got opportunity to learn. Exactly. Like, you still, still got opportunity. opportunity to learn. But I feel like <laughs> nowadays people, like especially some of like the youth, like, and I don't want to sound like that old dude in the room. Like, ah, It's cool because I sound but, like him all the time. It's okay. Yeah, but I don't want to sound like <laughs> that okay. old dude in the room. But it's like, yo, like, you know, and I, when I talk to certain like younger entertainers, I'm like, look, like, you got to remember that like to be in this game and to last long, you have to like have a certain level of integrity because when you reach a certain level and you act in a certain way or you're not acting uh, – you're not being professional to a certain extent. People are going to go on you. Mm, not nah, facts. So you know it's crazy, bro. Like I don't even think I told my team this yet, but um, Angie Martinez is probably my favorite personality ever. Really? No cap. Of all time. Next to Arsenio Hall. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Cap. I respect that. I respect that. No, no, that. no. So like, like I love like she gives. <laughs> it's funny that you said you think you interview like her. I would like the the hope uh, interview like her. I ain't gonna say think. I'm gonna say hope because I love the fact that she. My favorite interview was Mace interview, mm. right? So like I feel like she which get, one when he had the uh, ski mask. Okay, on, okay, yeah. She got a such a great job at like I wasn't there that day too. I was bro, pissed about that. She got I was a, so mad. She, I wasn't she there. does a great job at like being your friend slash auntie, but still like she was able to press for information right without pressing though. It's like look if you want to. We can, but if you don't want to, we don't have to. So it may start it off like, you know, like, man, f this one, I talk about that. Then he just start going crazy. Like, yeah, man, because, man, f he's like, and I'm like, she does a great job at pulling things out of people without seeming messy. And I'm mm. like, bro, she's, I think she's a, a, one of the all time greats, bro. Like, but see what you just said, right? She pulls things out of people without being messy, right? Mm. That's the key to building relationships in, in this field, right? Because it's like, I look at a lot of like interviews now, right? And I think the main problem with how people conduct themselves with interviews or with artists, right? Like, let's say I'm trying to think of like of an of an interview where we kind of talked about some. Shit. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but let's say I had G Herbal with me, right? And and G Herbal and I were talking about something, and like he had some shit going on. I think I think we were actually this isn't some shit going on, but we were actually talking about Juice World, right? Mm -hmm. I forgot. I think the last song on his last project was a letter to Juice, if I'm not mistaken, right? And I think he said that that was the first time that he ever spoke about Juice. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm trying to remember this interview. But I remember, like, in the interview, we were talking about it, and I could, like, and I visibly saw Herbo, like, start to, like, get emotional, right? And I started to see, like, the the little, like, the look, you know, the look in people's eyes when yeah. you, like, you could tell that they hold him back. back. Yeah. yeah. And, like, and I let him talk his and say what he had to say, and then I just moved on. Because, mm. like, you know, you want those moments because those moments mean a lot. You know, and, and it, at the end of the day, it's him, like, finally being able to express himself. Like, Mace, with the things that they want to talk about, but they've been afraid to. But also, like, you got to know when to stop. Mm. You know, or you got to know how to ask it correctly. Because I feel like now, like, a lot of interviews will be like, so, like, I heard you're beefing with, like, bro, like. No, thanks. Like, think of, like, a, a, a That's some decorum. Yeah. Like, that's some decorum. I just learned that word. Decorum, you just learned. <laughs> <laughs> that's some decorum. 
Like, right. yeah, that's some of the cornballs. So when I get it, yo, do you um, what's the most frustrating part about this interview thing? You think mm, about this interview thing? Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's like I think the most frustrating part is like when people, when you give artists an opportunity and then like they act like and then they act too cool, like they don't want to be there. Right, like I feel like I've had a lot of those, um, or like when they smoke before the interview and they get too high, and then they're just in the chair like this, and they're just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I dealt with a lot of those, and like a lot of those artists, like I f with to this day, um, like on a personal level, because they've also been like, yo, bro, I'm sorry, I was so fried, ah, whatever, or like I was still early on in my career. But then there's also artists who like I don't really have those type of relationships with now. Because it's like, at the end of the day, like, you leave a bad taste in my mouth after you do that. Mm -hmm. And some artists, like, later we build those relationships and we're cool and, you know, it's, you know, it's water under the bridge. It's not a big deal. But then other, like, you know, it kind of makes you less inclined to do things with them again as they come back around. It's like, why would I, why yeah. would I bring you back to my show after, like, my first time working with you was like, yeah. Not nah, facts. I hated it. I think for me is the people want to, like, uh, again, we got the paperwork now, but, like, people saying things and wanting to cut it out. Like, I hate that. That's I hate my that shit. That's the worst part of this shit for me. Bro, I have... <laughs> it's like, stand on what you say, bro. Because I'm tired of this Like, And I don't that. mind cutting out certain things because, like, I will make, like... If it's, like, a small edit, right, Um, I'll cut it out. You know what I'm saying? Because, I, I, you know, it is what it is, right? But there is an interview out there um, with uh, my brother, Gashi. You know Gashi? You ever heard of Gashi? Probably not. I'm not Gashi's sure. Gashi's an incredible artist, right? Incredible. The interview was, like, one of the first couple interviews I did in my new studio, the one that you see now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The one with, like, the hexagons. Yeah, yeah, And the interview was about an hour and a half long. One of my favorite interviews of all time. And, like, they just wanted me to cut too much out of it. And it wasn't Gashi. Like, I just want, like, people to know, half the time, the artists don't care. But, like, it's, like, it's just they wanted me to cut things out of the interview. And, like, I, like, one, like, I was editing my own interviews at the time, mm -hmm. right? And I still, to some extent, like, edit a lot of my own content, depending on if, if I give it to Rob or I give it to someone like JV on my team. But, like, you know, cuts, I normally try to make the interview cuts myself if I have to, um, like, edits-wise for the main vid. But, uh, but I had, they, like, they sent me back, like, 10 things. And I was just like, this interview is beautiful because it's so unhinged, oh, right? Authentic, right. Like, it's, it's authentic. And it's just me and him just, it's like, He's like, um, what's Gashi? Albanian? Something like that. No, he's not. He's like Albanian, something like that. But like, he always jokes that he, I think he was joking that he was like Puerto Rican too, right? And like, cause we look, cause we look alike, right? So like, it was just kind of like two Puerto Rican cousins sitting across from each other, just talking for an hour and a half. And I was just like, damn, man, like, I'm really mad I didn't get to put this interview out. So, damn, so you didn't even put it out? No, man, cause I didn't want to cut it. Because it's like, you got to realize it's different if they're like, yo, take like this little part I'm out of a 20 minute interview out. Like, that's nothing. That takes me five minutes to cut. This interview was an hour and a half long. Have you ever, have you ever like, was like, no? Yeah. I was like, I was like, I don't want to take it out. But have you ever like posted it and like, was like, man, bro. There have been, there have been times that I probably did do it, but I probably did by accident. Okay. I try to like, I try to be like reasonable, you know, especially at the, closer to the beginning of my career. Cause you don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to. Yeah, but facts. like. Nowadays, I don't really have too much taken out. They'll just kind of be like, "Oh, just don't highlight this or don't highlight that." There was actually, I'll tell you this too, because this is like, this is it's already out now, so who cares? Like, they didn't really when I had Skilla Baby, they didn't really want me to highlight the Skilla Baby and T Grizzly mm. uh, collab project because he announced it on my show, mm -hmm. and they're like, um, "I guess they didn't want to announce it at the time." It's Skilla Baby from Detroit. Detroit, yeah. So it's a great interview with Skilla, right? I had something similar, but that's why I, I could have already, uh, I could. As soon as you said they ain't want to announce it, I'm like, he got to be from Detroit. But. Yeah. No, no, they didn't want It's not that they didn't want it out. They just didn't want it highlighted in the interview title. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, because, uh, you know, the, the, the whole thing with Skill and T Grizzly, the way that Skill explained is different parts of Chicago, them coming together is a big deal. It's like, you know, whatever. And I guess they didn't want to highlight it at the time. But it, I think I thought it was a very important thing because I'm like, this is real. Shit. Like, mm -hmm. they do some real progress in the city by working together. And then the project just dropped last Friday anyway. So it was like, the interview was like five, six months ago. But I'm like, all right, so I didn't get to highlight this part or capitalize off but, this moment. Because, right. But the project still ended up coming out the way that, you know, so. Thanks. And Some people I, just don't see the vision. No, I know. But, like, I get it. But I still posted the clip, like, a month later. I was like, they just, they shooting the vid. Like, it's on Instagram. They're shooting the vid. Like, and I just posted the clip and no one said anything. No, nah, like, facts. So, so, sometimes it'd be just a momentary thing. Are too. you at power? Yes, you, I am. Do yeah. you, how did the uh, the on the radio, 
on the radar thing happened? So on the radar was uh on the radar is like so it's on the radio at power, but on the radar is it still its own separate entity. Like I own on the radar 100. Mm-hmm. percent You know what I'm saying? But we started it in the iHeart building, um, you know, because like the good people over there like gave me the opportunity to use the studios and you know kind of start building the platform there as uh as I saw fit. You know, I started off doing like one or two interviews a week. Um, after like I would do Angie show or after I finished my my regular work and I was just kind of like interviewing up and coming artists from the city at the time. Literally anybody who wanted to do an interview, I like I hollered at them, you know. Thanks. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't. It, it was just like yo, if if I fuck with you, I fuck with you. Come come do on the radar and like you know, shout out the good people at iHeart who you know saw the vision and allowed me to just kind of do what I did without taking ownership of it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I feel like you know when you start like. When you start an idea like this, people always don't want to buy into it, but they're willing to give you the space to see where it goes. Mm. And, I, and you know, I at the time, I might have felt a way about it, but I'm blessed that they did it the way that they did it because I have ownership of my content mm. at the end of the day. And that's been, that's been able to create a nice relationship with them on the side, too, where On The Radar does get to be on the radio every Friday night, 8 to 10 p.m., mm. um, but also remains entirely myself that's hard. and owned by me. Um, and also um, could open many doors down the line for radio for stuff in radio. You know, we are talking about doing some other stuff with On the Radar at iHeart. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I can say about that no, right now, the other stuff coming up. But it does. I, I think it's I think it's cool that we're in a space now where ownership is like is accepted and, and, and championed. And uh, my goal is to keep On the Radar owned by me and the squad for as long as possible. So that's pretty much how it got started, though. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. What was that one interview that took you over the hump? Like, that was like, damn, we doing, I don't know, locals and anybody that could come to now, we got to be picky about this. Or now we got to, we got to choose smartly or now it's something that's big. What was that one? Um, I think interview, if we're talking about interviews, not freestyle. Or freestyle. We, either one, whatever that was the first one. If it was well, the interview the first, or the freestyle. The first big interview that we did, it was kind of cool because it was like a, out, back in like spring slash summer, early summer of 2021, I was really just running gunning with a lot of these uh, interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was paying like four or $500 an interview to produce them because I had like three camera people, uh, a photographer, all this shit like that. And, um, and so I did three interviews this one week, right? And it was it was such a crazy week. This was like one of my favorite weeks of on the radar history ever. And what's crazy is like a lot of my team who's with me now they weren't there for that. This was like very early on. Um, so shout out my boy Q. Shout out my boy Benny. Shout out Nikki. Um, they were all kind of rocking with me, and they were kind of you know they were running gunning around with me. So we did a Dusty Locaine interview that week. I think it was like Dusty's second or third interview, but it was Dusty's like longest interview. Like me and Dusty talked for like. 40, 50 minutes, right? But the kicker is we did that interview at th- at like 2 in the morning mm. at the studio called Invite Only, right? That same week, I interviewed Busy Banks, right? And it was right before Busy's song with Pop Smoke came out, um, 30, on his posthumous album. And that was also when Busy was, I think it was around the time Busy was beefing with CJ too. So we cleared that up on that interview and then that one went out, right? And then at the end of that week, that weekend was when I interviewed k Flog, B-Love, and Dougie B for the first time. Mm. And that's when Brotherly Love had just hit a mill in a month. And that was like the very beginning of like the Bronx drill wave. And so those three, it just was like boo, 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 boo. And then the that was k Flog's first interview. B, uh, I think it was B-Love's second interview and Dougie B's first interview. And they're only interview all three of them together Damn. to this day. That's crazy. So after that interview, that just kind of like, 
That's did, just what up. Did you notice how like people started to like react to the platform differently? Like, cause it probably was hard to get the. Was it ever hard to get the bigger artists? Or? Absolutely. I mean, it wasn't hard, but like you could tell that like people were hesitant because they didn't really know. Like, uh, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. You can look that part out. You straight. I told you, I'm still dealing with this cold shit. Take your time, man. It's good. I'm about to pour. Up. You want some? Yeah. What's well, yeah. up? You can pour your own poison. What is this? You could, it's, it's, it's a nail. Bottle. No, no you good. You good. I guess I had to bottle. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah, y'all got y'all allergies is different in Atlanta. No, nah, Atlanta, I'm not from here, but it's the worst. They said it's the worst, um, one of the worst, if if not the worst. Yeah, cause I la- I wasn't like this when I left New York, by the way. That's all you wanted? Yeah, cause I you had the rest. Nah, I just need a little shot. All right, all right, I'm gonna take the rest. <sighs> cause I'm talking, and I feel my allergies kicking. No, nah, you straight, bro. Take your time, man. We good. I told you we ain't, we ain't, we ain't, uh, we, we like casual over here, man. Oh, okay. We do what we want over here, man. We casual. I don't got no COVID. I check myself every day this week. It's just allergies, and I'm in Atlanta, and I heard Atlanta got really bad allergies, so yeah. this is what I'm dealing with. They said um, a pile on the tank, tank is crazy. Exactly. Uh, all right, I'm good. So, uh, so yeah, so we did the K-Flock joint, and then that just went crazy, bro. And then that summer, I found uh, this studio called HMD Studios, which is owned by my brother, Devon, who uh, I had interviewed in college, funny enough. So he's Devon Terrell. He's an artist from New York. And um, we started doing interviews there. You know, I caught... Chow Lee early on, Cash Cobain, who's now known for producing like hits like My Everything. Plus, um, one of him and Chow Lee got one of the biggest uh mixtapes of uh 2022, 2022, yeah, 2022 mm-hmm. with Too Slizzy, Too Sexy. Um, they kind of really championed and, and started like that sexy drill lane. Um, who else did I have early on that summer? I'm trying to think. Uh, HC Ben Dope, who signed to Rock Nation now, and then that summer was when I was in there and I had done freestyles before. But they kind of been like ghetto. Like I would take my laptop out, plug my headphones in, play the beat, let them rap in the mic over the and then try to listen later on to match match it. Match yep. it yep. Mm-hmm. And so I was in the studio one day. I'm like, yo, can we do freestyles here? Like, is that possible? And uh, my boy Rob was like, oh, ask Kev the manager. And like they was talking and ah uh, ah. Uh, and then they were like, yeah, we can do freestyles here. And I'm like, word. I want to start doing that. So like I set up a session with five artists who I fuck with: um, Zero McKenzie, Lola Brooke, Ty Dre. Um, oh my God, who are the other two? I don't want them to kill me. Hold on, I'm a, I'm a pop up in there. Pass me my phone, cause I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to forget everybody. It's cool. We we charge it to your brain, not your heart, bro. We forget all the time. I love, I love all my, I love all my people who who started this shit with me, man. I want to make sure everybody gets their flowers. I ain't gonna be one of those people that's just like, oh, I'll I'll, I'll figure it out later. Nah, I need to know their names now because they deserve their flowers for being there at the beginning. But I called them the starting five, right? Because they were the first five people to ever do, well, not to ever do the freestyles, but they were the first five people to really do the freestyles um, starting in that spot with me, which I, like, I appreciated more than anything. Because, you know, people don't got to do shit for you, right? No, um, it was, all right, so it was, it was Zero McKenzie, Lola Brooke, Nate Joel, Dallas Anjay, and Tadre. I kept getting Tadre and Dallas Anjay's names mixed up. But, um, but yeah, so they, I had them all there together, five artists, same spot. I was going to do seven that day, but we recorded five freestyles, one hour. Paid like a hundred dollars for that session, and I just took those five freestyles and I started it. And uh, and Lola and me and Lola go way back. Like you know, um, quick sidebar. Like you know how like on my IG it says Gay P the city's champ. Mm-hmm. Lola gave me that name. Oh shit. Yeah. So Lo- like the whole reason I-, I call myself Gay P the city's champ is because Lola just kept on calling me that and calling me that and calling me that and calling me. I that. fuck with Lola, man. Lola's the best, man. Lola's really like one of the purest people in this game, bro. Like for real, for real, like. There's not a there's not a more genuine soul in this game than Lola. I believe it. I'm definitely trying to get her on, man. She's crazy. She's I, the best, I, but yeah. So do she, you do you watch do you watch any other platforms? Like, do you like study anybody else or do I stu- I mean, not even study? Do you like just pay attention to any? What, what's some of the other platforms you pay attention? to? I mean, it's hard, bro. Like, you know, I always would watch No Jumper, you know, and but as No Jumpers kind of shifted away from like hip hop content to other stuff, like. You know, I, I'm not going to say I watch that all the time anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I stick with Breakfast Club. I love Joe Budden. I love uh, Rory and Maul. Um, I love your podcast, obviously. Mark. I'm trying to think who else. I try you to ain't think, had to say that, bro. I got, Ooh, come on, bro. I always it's salute fine. people who do a good shit. Cam, my boy Art at Cam Capone has been doing an, uh, an amazing job. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Do I be saying I'll be watching anybody else? Do you follow... Uh, I mean, you do freestyles. Do you follow any freestyle platforms like oh, Bars man. on I-95? Yeah, shout out. First of all, I thought we were just talking about interviews. Oh, no, no. Shout no. out Bars on I-95. Shout out my guys. I'm actually supposed to interview them uh, soon, too. Uh, shout out my boys. Uh, obviously, like, the legends like Fire in the Booth, Charlie Sloth, like, huge inspiration uh, to everything that I've done, especially with me trying to bridge the gap between, you know, here uh, in America with the U.K. Mm-hmm. Um 
From the block, how can I forget about from the block? That from the block with crazy. my brother Zay. Yeah. Zay actually, we shipped the on the radar sign down here to Zay's crib. So okay. shout out to Zay because Zay's like honestly at this point, I feel like Zay's becoming one of my OGs in this shit too. Uh, who else do I really like to watch? Uh, freestyle platform, watch. like or even like when you well, study. Well, of course, like, like Fug Flex. You know what I'm saying? Flex, flex is yeah, a, Flex is a goat. You know what I'm saying? I just because I work at Power One Five doesn't mean I can't give people their flowers. Uh, Fuck Flex, Tim Westwood, huge inspiration. Crazy. Uh, over the UK for me too. Like, uh, is t Tim Westwood still going? Yeah, he's still doing the same. Jeez, that nigga's a legend. I want to be like him, man. Like his age, doing like what he's doing and keeping pushing, crazy. man. What's uh, the other guy? It was um Zaylo? And I was a, it was a, it's a white guy, I think, if I'm not mistaken. He's been doing his thing though. Like, Charlie, nah, Charlie Soft. I think he's like he ah, uh, what's the nigga name? I forgot his name, bro. Like a personality, more so a personality. Like, I forgot his name. Fuck it. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll, you're not talking about Adam from No Jumper, right? Nah, nah. Definitely not talking about Adam. Dar nah, oh, not no Dar war. Not no war. Not no war. No. He's more so like, was it Ryan Seacrest? Like he was like a t TV show. He was like a TV personality, right? I fuck well, with. Well, be Ryan Seacrest. You don't like, fuck with. He's like, a, like he. That's yeah, legendary. But he's, pop, but he's, but he's more like in the pop lane. But. Man, I just watch. I was tap into shit like that because, like, I'm not, I'm not on pop. You feel right. me? He's like, it would teach me some shit. You like, know who I fuck with in the pop lane? Who? Elvis Duran. I see. I'm not. Familiar. Elvis Duran is like the morning show host uh, at Z100 in New York. Is yeah. he skinny guy? Yes. I think I know. He got a, a very unique voice. Yeah, legend. I think I know you're talking about. Yeah, my mom used to listen to him about. a lot. Uh, I, I car, think so when I was in when I was doing radio, I think I mimicked his uh, his air check. Like when you go on, really? Yeah, when you do air check, when you go like YouTube air check, I think yeah. like a few of his pop up. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I love nah, Elvis. Yeah. Elvis is good. Nah, that's crazy. Um, Yo, so do you feel like um have you noticed people? It might be different now, but have you noticed people like they'll know your platform, but they don't. When they see you, they they act like they don't know who you are. I'm the on the radar guy. That's what they say. <laughs> they, nah, some people know my name, but most people just will be like, "Oh, you're the guy from on the radar." Nah, uh, thanks. Which I mean, man, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm, I feel like there's people who like want to be famous, and then there's people who are like just kind of popping and like don't really care. Like if they, I'm one of those people. Nah, like thanks. I'm like I'm grateful for everything I have. I'm not complaining about anything I have. But like, if I'm known as the on the radar guy. I'm cool with that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I, I'm i more interested in creating, like, <clears throat> excuse me, dope moments for the culture than, like, just being famous. You know? You're the guy with the green shit. I'm the guy with the green <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the that's green what shit. I get, too. Oh, that's the guy with the green shit. Or, no. or, or you're the guy with the green room. Like, I, I've got, I've, you're the off-the-radar guy. You're the on-the-radar guy. You're the guy with the green shit. You're the guy with the green room. Um, You're the guy from YouTube. Mm. <laughs> what, was, what, what, was your favorite, what was your favorite freestyle? Oh, of all time? Ah, yeah. oh, damn, this is so tough, bro. People ask me this question all the time, and I'm just like, damn. Um, it changes, man. It really does. I feel like lately, I've, I always say, like, AJ Tracy, because mm. I just love UK hip-hop, right? But then, of course, like, D-Thang is, like, the biggest one. D-Thang and 4-1 have the biggest freestyles uh, on the channel. Um, what's the big? What was the most numbers you 4 did? 4-1. 4-1 is at, I'll tell you right now. It was uh, D-Thang and 4-1. They were fighting for the top spot for a while. But they're at, hold on, hold on, hold on. They're at the Kyle Rich, Jen Carter, and Tata Cypher's at 15 million views, and D Thang's at 13. Mm, and then right good. underneath them is uh, Lil Mabu at 3.3 mil. That's not, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm trying to see. Oh, and then like the Ladies Night Cypher. Ladies Night Cypher and Veli Vels, uh, those are also some of my favorites. I really love uh, Bobby Schmurda's, Busy Banks. Like, uh, I'm trying to think who else I did. Finesse two times is a great recent one too, by the way. No, nah, finesse shit was hard. Finesse like, two times is a great recent. I'm not gonna lie to you, I looked at that and I said, because I don't really like a lot of the shit that's coming out now, and I listened to it. I was like, he had to save this specifically for this. <laughs> it felt like it. I was like, nah, he. It felt like he was like holding on to that. Like right. he knew that he was going to do that. That shit was crazy. Yeah, finesse is like. I think Vanessa's shit was so cool because, like, that week we did, like, a whole week of artists who weren't from New York. Mm. And we did, like, big freestyle. So we did uh, La Tyler, Finesse Two Times, Lakia. La Tyler going crazy. Yeah, Lakia, Icewear Vezo. Somebody else that week, too, that I forgot. I'm trying to think who else was that week. But that was a, that was a really dope week for me just because, like, I feel like as I've grown as a platform, you know, you know, my people from New York who are in the building, like, they know, like, being from New York, New Yorkers will try to keep you in New York for as long as you can, mm -hmm. right? Like, 
It's like, you know when, when Boozy would be like, the people who hate on you most come from your own city? No, I thought, yeah. I'm not saying people hate on, like, I'm not saying New Yorkers are like that, but there is a mentality in New York, right? That's like, once you're in New York, like, you can't go. You know what I'm saying? And New York is a mecca. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. But like, I think as creators, we have to have certain levels of ambition to think beyond our cities, to be like, all right, cool. Like, you know, you're from Atlanta, right? Nah, I'm Where from you? Baltimore. That's where that two comes from. Yeah, yeah, I'm, That's I'm where from the two comes. Yo, that shit was tripping me out. I'm like, he's not from Baltimore. He's <laughs> nah, not from Atlanta. I'm not from here. No, no, no. All right, but the way you see, the way you say. They embrace me for sure, though. No, nah, I'm glad that yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, but the yeah. way you said two kind of gave you up, bro. I go <laughs> like, I it was that bad? Nah, nah, it was it was light. Like you could tell, like you ain't you ain't really been in Baltimore for a while. Yeah, I but like I hear the way you said two, and I'm like, he not really from Atlanta. He yeah, gotta be I ain't from Baltimore. From Atlanta. Like, nah, 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 but nah. like, all right, so look at it this way. Like, let's say you were in Baltimore and you 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 know you were doing these interviews and you were like the guy to go to for interviews in Baltimore. Eventually, that era of Baltimore rap is not gonna be the same anymore. Mm. So it's like, what do you do at that point? Do you just sit around, twiddle your thumbs, and wait for the next era to come around, or do you expand and you? Make your reach bigger than what you want than what you had it. No, That's no. how I feel about New York. Like I love New York right now, and I think New York's having such an incredible moment. But it's like I would be dumb to not come to Atlanta and not do on the radar here. I would be dumb not to go to Baltimore and not do on the radar Baltimore. I'll be dumb not to go to you know the UK, Ghana, Nigeria, and not do on the radar out there. You know what I'm saying? It's like I I look at it more as like people could get boxed into their city, but I want to be. Known as like one of the biggest music platforms in the world. No, nah, it's crazy. This shit going crazy though. It's, it's, Thank you, bro. It's up there, man. It's, I appreciate it's definitely that. up there. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Did we uh any missed opportunities? Did we miss anything? I don't know, man. Ask me whatever you want. I I'm chilling. No. I can keep talking, bro. I can keep, <laughs> that's what talking I can talk for another hour. What you get label? Y'all about to get signed or some shit? Merch. What label? What label? <laughs> what, what label? Thanks, Dad. What, what uh, label? So, all right. So, uh, so a few things we got going on right now. So, we recently started On The Radar Records, um, which is uh, obviously pretty self-explanatory, the On The Radar record label. Um, how many songs do we have out? Close to 80? 80? About 80. About 80. So, we, we, we started dropping freestyles and, uh, live and live performances back in January, like the ones that we had access to with producers. Uh, 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 so, we've already dropped about 80. Um, this is all like original beats, original songs. Original beats, original freestyles, Jeez. some from live performances. So like, like if you did a song and uh, you you didn't do a freestyle on my show, but you did a live version of that song, mm -hmm. we could put that on DSPs. Okay. So uh, we put out some ciphers on there too. So really, my goal for the end of the year is to drop three hundred songs. Mm. Right. I'm trying to move like NBA Young Boy in this. Right. And to do that, uh, got my good boy John. Heading up the record label. We got uh we're not signing artists right now, but we're just putting out music. So we're putting out freestyles. Uh we like there was one week, like two weeks ago, we dropped like 13 songs in a day. We dropped the whole project. So wait, day. somebody can do a live performance of their song and you can put it out? Type shit. Damn. Do they gotta sign anything? Like yeah, that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I oh like, yeah, oh we do paperwork. Okay. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We type with the paperwork. Oh, so like you can Oh, like I said, I got like you can own their. It's like you own your your content basically. Like this exactly, is, this like is the mine. live recording. But they get a oh, piece okay. of it, and then my piece, like I make sure everybody on my team eats. Like my percentage of the record gets broken down to John, the person who took the picture, okay. Rob, my engineer, Toby, who booked the artist, Dev, who helped us start this whole thing. Like everybody around me eats. Okay. And I want people to own percentages of what they've worked on around me for the rest of their lives. That's hard. So that's a big thing for me with the label. So. We got the original, we got the freestyles, the performances, all that shit coming out, and then we have original records that we got coming out too. So uh, we got a, a, a pro, we got a couple projects on the way. We got a, uh, we got a single coming out. Uh, huh? We got like three, three or four singles coming out. We got a, we got an Afrobeat. Thank you. I got <laughs> we got an Afrobeat single coming out with my girl Fadi. Um, shout out my brother Chow and Lonnie Love, uh, Chow Lee, Lonnie Love. They recorded a song for us the other night. We got this really dope record. Uh, with the uh, hold on, we got this. It's really, a whole lot of motion, basically. It's a lot whole, of motion. A lot, a lot of motion. We got this record with uh my people Fergie, Jaja, Fergie baby, Jaja, Couture, and B Jax. That's it. Play a little part of it. Give a little taste. You won't get copyrighted for this either. I got that's what I say. I'm, I'm, I'm like, wait, wait, am I going? Nah, we got you good. He like when I'm rocking my hips.
cops like Pull up and shit on a bitch like These bitches gon' talk, they never gon' spark But can't even hold on a blick, right? Give me dick, now she can't even sit right I don't love her, we fuck after midnight I'm from Hollow, when nigga just get like Baby and Jaja, we drop it just six Yeah, 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 shake is this considered a uh, drill still? Is that or no? I feel like it's, it's club. Club. It's like yeah, it's club. But okay. you won't get copyrighted for that because that's our shit. So we'll make sure that you don't get touched for that. That just sound good, right, John? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he looking like I don't know, man. And, and, anything like... that has to do with us, you won't get copyrighted. But Yo, uh, but yes, you, we work on that. Are you doing any um collabs? Like, are y'all doing collabs with like other platforms and shit like that? Uh, are we? Yeah. Oh, Zay, yeah. So shout out my brother Zay. Uh, from the block, of course. Okay. Uh, Zay and I have been talking about doing uh, from the radar forever. So like, you know how Zay got the hanging mic. Yeah, Zay, yeah. Z- Zay's like the originator of that shit. He's the one that really like everybody else doing the hanging mics started from Zay. So um, we're actually gonna do from the radar from on the radar. That's uh, hard. Put the hanging mic in front of on the radar. We just haven't set up uh, a time for it yet, but that's coming also. That's so hard. that's gonna be like because me and Zay have two of the biggest like influential platforms of hip hop right now. So it only makes sense for us to come together and. Make nah, that happen. Plug the merch too, man. Plug the merch before we Oh, and come, we got all the radar hoodies out now. Uh, designed by uh, my <laughs> good people. Um, don't watch TV. Uh, on the radar radio.com. You could go check that out. And yeah, we in Atlanta, man. We got a lot of dope shit on the way. Uh, shit, anything else? No, nah, man. I think that, that shit was great, bro. I think I love, I, I love what you got going on, bro. Thank I you, think brother. I appreciate um, that. Just to see it, especially independently. Like, that's, I represent independent. I fuck with it. I love it. Thank you, bro. Keep, I appreciate keep, that. Stay independent, man. Oh, man, come on. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> Y'all feel like it's different. You could be now. independent and you you could still you could look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here so this clip could come back to bite me ten years from now and be like, oh, you sold your soul. But the real thing is like Partnerships. If, even if I don't stay independent, just know my ownership is gonna be intact. Mm. I will make sure that on the radar is in good hands for the rest of eternity. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit ain't going nowhere. Whether a big company buy, buys into us or buys us or whatever, just know that on the radar will not be making any decisions that compromises the integrity of the show and the platform. Because um, honestly, what we built is too special to just be given away for a penny. All facts, no cap, man. Tell them how to follow you, man. Let's get out of here. Well, you already know what it is. It's Gay PMYC, Mr. Step in, step out. Don't get stepped on. Follow me at On the Radar Radio at Gay PMYC. You already know what it is. Normally at the end of the interviews, I say love and support is free, but you know, I'll say it here. Love and support is free, man. So make sure you go show some love, go show some support. Show my brother some love and support. He really doing his thing out here. And you know what I'm saying? We in Atlanta, baby. It's a wrap. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We out. J Hill, we out. Bow!